Hi everyone, uh, my name is Gabor Daniel Balog and uh, I will talk about the source to source uh, translation step uh, of, of the OP2 framework, uh, which now using the Clang's uh, lib tooling. So, uh, in the first par part of this talk, I will uh, show some uh, the basic idea be behind the uh, OP2, which is for facilitate developing uh, applications for unstructured grids. Uh, and then I will show how we can uh, do uh, automatic parallelization and source-to-source -source translation uh, in OP2 to get uh, better performance, basically. So now the uh, hardwares that we use uh, for HPC are uh, rapidly changing and uh, the, we cannot re-coding uh, every application for every new uh, type of uh, hardware. Uh, so for getting uh, uh, a future-proof HPC application, one way is to use uh, domain-specific high-level high abs abstraction, which means that uh, the developer can uh, declare it, the computation in a higher level, and then with the automated techniques, we can generate optimized implementation for the uh, specific application. Um, yeah, and for OP2, we're uh, dealing with unstructured mesh, mesh applications, which are operating on unstructured grids, which can be specified as uh, spe uh, some sets like nodes, edges, or cells, and with explicit connection between the uh, these sets. So we have uh, explicit tables which containing which node con uh, connects with which edge. Uh, with these connections, uh, it's much harder to parallelize these computations, but the um, partial different differential equations are much easier to uh, transform to um, unstructured mesh applications, and they are performed quite well with unstructured meshes. So the OP2 uh, framework is basically uh, looks like a conventional library for the developer. They uses the uh, OP2's uh, API calls, and then the OP2 have a source-to-source -source translation step, which creates uh, target-specific parallel uh, implementations of the computational loops. So with OP2, we can specify all the major parts of the uh, unstructured mesh application. We can specify the sets, the, da the data on the sets, and the maps, maps uh, and of course we can specify the computational loops um, for the application, which contains the uh, definition of the computation on each uh, set element and the access patterns for to perform that computation. Yeah. So the whole process of OP2 uh, looks like this. We have the unstructured mesh application with the OP2 API calls, and then we have the uh, source-to-source -source translation steps where we generate the uh, target-specific implementation of the computational loops. And then uh, the generated files can be compiled uh, as usual with any type of compiler. So this is how uh, a computational loop, loop looks like uh, in an open OP2 application. So we have the operation that will be performed on every element, element of the set, and uh, there will be the description to the uh, parallel loop, which contains that we will compute this uh, loop on the uh, edges, and we will access the data on the edges uh, and we will read it and we will uh, access uh, some data from the cells through a mapping. And to, from, from this description we want to generate a whole parallel loop implementation. And uh, for this we use Clang's lib tooling uh, which gives a direct support for source-to-source -source translation. And this, uh, this lib uh, gives us the AST matchers interface, which is quite nice and robust for simple local loca uh, transformation. Basically, we build up the AST, we search in the AST, and we find interesting bits of codes in the AST, then we can write a replacement 
for the source code uh, corresponding to the AST part that we find. But to handle significant structure changes in the uh, source code, it's quite hard to, to manage. And uh, this is what we need with OP2. So we want to uh, generate a whole parallel loop implementation from the description that uh, I showed in the previous slide. <coughs> so to manage this in OP2, we uh, find that if the generated loops are uh, very similar, you know, uh, so if I generate, for example, a, a parallelized implementation for every loop with, for, with OpenMP, then there is a lot of uh, static code in the generated co uh, co uh, implementations. And there are a lot of parts which is only depend from the number of um, parameters of the, of the computation, and so on. So if I want to transform uh, one uh, already generated implementation, or a generated uh, parallel loop, to perform another operation, it became uh, to, uh, a problem we, where we only want to make small local changes on the source code. So we created these uh, so-called uh, parallelization skeletons, which uh, is a valid C++ code, which is uh, already uh, in the form that we want to generate the code. But we need to basically insert the, the parts from the abstract dis description of the computational loop. And if we look at the generated code from the, for the previous example, we see that the main parts of the uh, skeleton stays the same. So there is still the static code which deals in this example. Uh, it deals with the MPI calls and uh, halo exchanges. And there are uh, uh, much more uh, small local changes. And to perform these local changes, we have the AST matchers, as I already mentioned, which looks like the same, this. Uh, so we have the skeleton. In the skeleton, I wrote the skeleton, so I know that there will be a function call to the skeleton function. And I want to change it to the user the, uh, supply the kernel function call. So I write an AST matcher, which basically tells that there will be a call expression which calls the uh, function which has a name skeleton and give a key to this match. And then in the backend, I get a callback that in the AST, the matcher uh, found the fun uh, function call. And now I have the source location that I want to replace with the proper uh, function call of the user function. And we, we can define all uh, mm -hmm. the local transformation in the form like this. And uh, basically, with this transformation, we get the uh, parallel implementation with only small uh, and easy local uh, transformations. So the whole generation process come to uh, dealing with the uh, target-specific kernel skeletons, which we have uh, mm, a single skeleton for every uh, target. And base, uh, if the target needs some specific optimization, maybe we, have, we can write another skeleton for the optimized uh, code as well. And then we, on the skeleton, we have the matchers. And the matchers do this uh, simple uh, modifications on the skeleton code. And we already have the uh, target specify, uh, specific optimized kernel, kernels that we want to. So the uh, advantages that we get with the AST matchers and the use of the skeleton approach is that basically to add the new, new uh, target that we want to support with OP, OP2 Clang, we can write a skeleton, which is um, basically just write a simple um, parallelized loop. Uh, and then we can write the matchers which is quite easy because I wrote the code that I want to match. So it's, it's, it's quite easy. And uh, we can also reuse the code uh, from the previous target uh, generators. And also, since the, most of the part uh, of the skeleton is doesn't change during the, the generation, uh, it's, and, uh, it, the, the skeleton is also uh, can be compiled and computed, but it basically does nothing. 
then it shows that the static code in this, inside the skeleton is a uh, valid C++ code and it doesn't have errors. So it reduces the, the possibility that we make some errors in the generated code. Yeah, and just for showing uh, the performance that we can get with this method and how uh, the skeletons are generalized, uh, I have two applications. One is uh, to the airfoil code and the other is a shallow water simulation. Both of them are representative to the uh, unstructured mesh applications because they have the most important uh, access patterns that we have to deal with in, uh, in these types of applications. And with OP2 uh, Clang, we can generate uh, vectorization versions of the vectorized versions of the, of the application, as well as uh, the parallelized version for Open, OpenMP and uh, for CUDA as well. So we can support this approach and Clang uh, CUDA as well. And we have quite nice uh, speed ups. Uh, yeah. So overall, uh, with OP2, we can facilitate the, the development of application of parallel uh, unstructured mesh applications. And uh, the OP2 Clang can perform quite well the source to source translation step of the OP2 framework. And uh, with introducing these skeletons, the code generation becomes a must, much simpler and more robust uh, step in the process. And it's much easier to add the new parallelization techniques and targets that we want to support in the framework. And thank you for the attention. Okay. Thank you very much.